Let's introduce Bessel's differential equation. And we're going to do that starting from the Helmholtz equation, which we're going to solve then in cylindrical coordinates. So just a quick recap. The Helmholtz equation describes the propagation of light, of electromagnetic radiation, in systems with constant or piecewise constant refractive index. And it looks like this. So n is the refractive index, and that's constant slash piecewise constant. And k0 is the wave vector in vacuum, that's 2 pi divided by lambda 0. And we're interested in solving this equation in a cylindrical coordinate system because, for example, we want to figure out what the eigenmodes are of an optical fiber, which has this cylindrical cross section over here. So let's see what this equation looks like if we translate it into cylindrical coordinates. And obviously the thing to watch out for is the Laplacian. So we just go back to one of your books on um, analysis um, and vector calculus, and that will tell you the form of the Laplacian in a cylindrical coordinate system. And it's going to be second derivative of Psi with respect to R, one over R D Psi dr. And then we have 1 over r squared, second order derivative with respect to the angle theta, and then d2 psi dz squared. So that's our Laplacian, but let's not forget the final term, k0 squared and squared psi is equal to 0. Let's take a step more in trying to solve this equation. And uh, we're going to do that by the separation of variables. So in general, our field depends on the radial coordinates, the angle coordinates, and the z component. But we're going to assume that we can use a form which is a product of three different functions, where the first function only depends on the radial coordinates, second function only depends on theta, and the final function only depends on c. Let's use one more flash of divine inspiration to already now propose a certain form for the final two functions. And let's say that the theta dependence is given by exponential minus j k theta theta. And here we have minus k z z, where for our purposes, kz and k theta are constants coming from the separation of uh, variables technique. So where does this form come from? Well, that basically comes from the physical interpretation behind this, uh, this problem here. But we're not going to discuss that here. We're going to postpone that until we actually calculate the eigenmodes of an optical fiber. But that, let's just assume for now that this thing falls uh, out of the sky. But let's see if it works. Pause the video, substitute this particular form into that equation, and then see what happens and try to simplify the resulting equations. Now, one thing you will notice is that in all of the possible terms here in this equation, there will always be these two exponentials. If you don't do anything, they're there. And if you take the derivatives with respect to either theta or z, the exponentials will also still be there, but they will just generate some extra prefactors. So in all of the terms, I can divide away these exponentials, which will save me some, uh, some writing here. Let's take a look at the first term. That's the second order derivative with respect to r. That now becomes d2r dr squared where now we go from a partial derivative to a regular derivative because r only depends on r and, and nothing else. And then, of course, as I mentioned, we have these factors, but we divide them away. And then the second term becomes 1 over r dr dr. Okay. And then we have 1 over r squared. And then we have the second derivative with respect to theta. If we take the derivative with respect to theta once, we pick up minus j k theta. So if we do that twice, we pick up minus k theta squared. And then, of course, uh, let's not forget, we need to multiply by r and we divide away the, the exponentials. Now, in all of the other terms, there will always be a factor r, as you can quickly verify for yourself. So let's make some space for the other terms and let's multiply by r only at the very end here. So now we still need to tackle these, these final two terms 
and figure out what prefactor uh, they have when it comes to multiplying r. Okay, the next up we have the second order derivative with respect to z. So there we pick up a factor minus kz squared, similarly. And then finally we have this guy here, which is our original k0 squared n squared. So here we have three factors uh, which multiply r. Let's make this slightly more pleasing to the eye and multiply everything by r squared so that we get rid of this uh, ugly denominator over here. So this gives us r squared d r squared d r squared plus r dr dr. And then finally we have this thing over here. Um, let's first group these two things together and multiplying them by r squared, obviously. So this is going to give us r squared k not squared n squared minus k z squared. And then this is the remaining term. We have minus kt squared getting rid of the one over r squared here, multiplied by r equal to zero. So this looks already a bit nicer. But we can do even better and realize that this thing over here is just a constant. So we're going to give that constant another name, namely kt squared. Why do I call it kt squared? What's the physical meaning behind all of this? Well, again, this will be explained when we really calculate the eigenmodes of the optical fiber. Let's for now just pretend that this is any old constant. Um, and let's perhaps also give the constants a bit more of a neutral name that does not really remind us of the fact that we're dealing with eigenmodes in cylindrical waveguides. So let's perhaps, rather than calling it R, call it X. Um, let's rather than call this thing K theta, let's call this just a more neutral new. And let's also introduce a new variable, which is not X, but uh, not R, but X. And X is actually R times the, the product here with, uh, with KT. So R times KT. So r times the square root of uh, k naught squared n squared minus kz squared. So this way it will be a bit more neutral uh, looking. So pause the video, make these changes, and then finally you will end up with the long sought after Bessel differential equation. So since we're changing our variables from r to x here, we also need to know what to do with ddr and express that in terms of ddx. But obviously here we have the chain rule that comes to the rescue because ddr is going to be uh, ddx times dx dr. And if you calculate dx dr, well, that's going to be kt. So this is going to be kt times d uh, dx. So now we can just proceed. Uh, we first have r squared. Now r squared is of course x over kt squared. Okay. So this is just substituting this thing into that thing. And then we need to take the derivative not with respect to r but with respect to x. And every time we make the change from ddr to ddx we pick up a factor kt. So here we do that twice. So we have kt squared and then we have um, dx, dx squared. And then the good news is that this kt here, which we want to get rid of anyhow, indeed uh, cancels. So now we have the neutral sounding x squared, second derivative of x with respect to x. Same thing happens for that term over here. We will have a kt coming from this part and a kt coming from that part. They will cancel and we have x d dx. Okay. And uh, yeah, then, then finally we just have over here, uh, this becomes x squared minus nu squared big X equal to zero. If I finally rewrite this a little bit, and also use, for example, primes to uh, denote derivation here. Then we have the following differential equation. There we have it. 
this is Bessel's differential equation. You might wonder what are the solutions to this uh, differential equation? Well, they're not normal functions that you know, they're, they're special functions, namely um, this guy here, which is j nu x, uh, which is the Bessel function of the first kind. This is what this j stands for, Bessel function of the first kind of order nu. So nu is the order of the, the Bessel function. Very often, nu is an integer, and in that case, we replace nu by n. The unfortunate thing being that n is also the, the, the letter that we typically associate with refractive index. But okay, we can't help the fact that the alphabet only has 26 letters, so there's bound to be some overlap from, from time to time. So this is the form of the differential equation. Next up is trying to figure out what these mysterious Bessel functions look like, but that's for, uh, for later.